Welcome back, everybody. It's two guys and a stack of comics. I'm Mike. That's Reed. And today we're going to continue our discussion on movies that you hated, but we loved them. So this this one here is another uh, classic movie in my book. Um, and it's universally panned and hated. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it yeah. made a good box office, but no, this book comes with a really bad reputation. And it is the 2005 adaptation of The Fantastic Four. Uh, and, uh, Ewan Grufford, Chris Evans, Michael Chiklis, Jessica Alba uh, playing the Fantastic Four. Chris, Chris Evans? Chris Evans, yep. Captain America himself in his first superhero role. Uh, taking on the I'll Human Torch. Crazy watching this movie, how great he is at playing two vastly different Marvel characters. And I think even people who don't like this movie loved his Johnny Storm. It's absolutely insane seeing how great Chris Evans was at playing both the Human Torch and Captain oh. America and playing them accurately, it's, despite them being so different as characters. It's like he was born to play these roles. Yeah. I mean, he slipped right into that Human Torch role. What did he do before this? He wasn't in... He was in a lot of smaller, like, teen comedy kind of movies oh, okay. and things like that. But um, that's the number one thing that stood out to me when we watching this. Is like, man, I can't believe how good he was as Captain America and then play Johnny Storm. And I think you could actually argue he might actually be better at Johnny Storm he just, than he was at Captain America, although it's close. It's like he was playing himself. It's, he played it so well. So let's talk about a little bit of what the hate is uh, on this movie. Mm -hmm. I know it's it gets panned because... It's not Marvel, it's Fox. It's not the MCU, it's Fox. It's yep. Fox, so all the MCU heads definitely uh, ding it. Trash this and wait till what Marvel does, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't truly Marvel. But you gotta remember, in the, I think it was sometime in the 90s, uh, Marvel Comics nearly collapsed. Yep. And they sold the rights to some of their prime characters like Hulk, uh, the X-Men, Spider-Man, just to stay afloat. So for all you Marvel heads that really uh, ding some of these movies. Fox having these is kind of what saved Marvel there, Comics because there, they bought yeah, this. Yeah. There may not have been uh, Marvel Comics or any of the MCU had these not purchases. they uh, you know, decided to you know, sell some of these properties. So um, what, what are some of the other common complaints oh, of it? CGI gets a lot of junk from this about, oh it doesn't look you know, good enough, which again, it's 2005. Uh, a lot of the CGI is a little dodgy back then. I think the other thing is too, sometimes people again forget it's a comic book. And like, so I've, I've seen people, a lot of it's about Reed Richards and how it looks when he stretches in the film. I, I don't know, I mean, I can't compare that to when I've actually seen people stretch their arm under a door Have you reality. seen how it looks in the comics? It yeah. looks like that. I mean, it looks okay. Yeah, of course it looks a little rubbery and things like that, but it's, it's a movie. They can only do so much with it, especially the limitations at the time that they had. We're not talking 2023 when almost every blockbuster film is like 50% CGI, 50% performances. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of complaints about it. I think one of the things we'll focus on really on this is like, what do we really like about this movie? And so um, Reed Richards, my namesake, my, my name is Reed. Uh, so I've always really had a, a very strong uh, affinity for that character. I love the way the Fantastic Four is presented as a group in this movie. I think one of the great things they do is they capture the relationships between them in the real life. And you know, somebody uh, said not too long ago, and something I was watching, like when the Avengers, the scene of all four of them in New York City, that was the first time that multiple heroes appeared mm -hmm. on screen. Not true. Yeah, X Men had done it, and then Fantastic Four had done, had it. done it as well. And it, it, it's great to see the dynamics in these characters. It's, it, I think one of the things that the MCU really lacked for me was I never really got a sense of strong interpersonal connections between the characters. Like, they kind of make it like Captain America and Iron Man are friends who then turn into enemies. But if you look at the movies, they're almost always fighting each other in every film. Yep. I love that in this movie there are there's a large section of about 30 minutes where it's just kind of the camaraderie building between these four characters. I was going to say that one of the things that stood out to me about the film is that this film was ambitious in that you've got, and they would never do this today, but you've got to introduce four characters in one movie. Mm -hmm. um, well, five if you can with Doctor Doom. With Doctor Doom, has a significant portion. And of as well. I was, you know, surprised. I just watched it again today. I, I, I picked it up and watched it about 
six months ago. I was, I have a, a set with that one, the Daredevil, those, the Electric, Daredevil. and the Silver Surfer. The same yeah, and so, um, you know, I dug that, that fell out of the DVD case uh, uh, several months ago, and I just watched all of them, you know, yeah. and I was like, darn, you know, and all of those movies got panned, but I liked them. And um, I'll tell you, it was ambitious for them to develop all those characters in this movie, and I think they did an admirable job of it. Well, especially because it captures so much of the great comics, and Fantastic Four is a book that I've read most of my life just because of the, the Reed Richards connection, so selfish. I was like, oh, a superhero named Reed, I want to read that. When you go back and watch how Johnny and Ben Grimm interact with each other and the pranks that they play on each other, that's a huge part of the early Fantastic Four. And it was there. Is there. The bickering that takes place between And I think what's so interesting to me about the Fantastic Four is, again, this is the first family of Marvel. This was Stan Lee, the kind of what we think of as the modern Marvel comics. It all began with began Fantastic with Four group. 1. Yep. And what made them different at the time when you watch documentaries about why Marvel worked is the family dynamics and the actual like believable character problems that these characters had in the books separated them from at the time the DC Comics, Superman, Batman, where it was kind of this idealistic, you know, nothing really is going wrong in their personal life except their secret identity thoughts and crimes are going and this movie really explores that where all the characters are very flawed. And I think it captured their personalities. Reed Richards is absolutely presented as a scientific genius in the film. But his interpersonal ability to connect with Sue and recognize what she needs and kind of figure out what the group needs from him uh, gets in his way. He can't that's relate. so consistent with the comics. Ben Grimm with his you know, constant he it. anger about being the thing, but then you know he always doesn't want to not be the thing either because he can't stand not being part of the action. Yeah. They captured that well. Johnny Storm to me is the highlight character of the film for me in that he perfectly captures that spirit that Johnny had in the original comics, just being this hothead who is very selfish, very motivated about cars and girls and attention. But then at the end is ultimately very heroic and dedicated to his family. It just has to get to that point where he has to make that decision. Um, and I, I thought Jessica Alba gets panned a lot as Sue Storm. I thought she did a great job kind of playing the mother figure of this group, which Sue is that in the comics. Definitely. It may not be the female role that we love seeing in, in movies now, but she captures that. And honestly, that is who Sue Storm is in the early story. She's kind of that one that wrangles everybody together and keeps them on focus. Yeah. Uh, it was it was such a, a fun movie to watch. Um, it took you off the planet, then back on the planet. Yep. Um, it was one thing I was going to ask you that I didn't know about. They took some liberties with Doctor Doom. Yes. Because Doctor Doom sure. was not part of the accident that happened to them in space. Am I right? Correct. Yeah, and so one of the things is Doctor Doom is probably the only character in this film that I can agree with a lot of the criticism of. Uh, Doom is a little too integrated with the origin story of the Fantastic Four. Um, his power set is very inconsistent with what he has in the comic books. However, what I will give them in this film is when you're introducing characters at the same time, it was a very convenient plot thing to throw that in. It's something that I think if the MCU would have thrown that wrinkle in, people would be fine with that change. And hey, I like that they took the Fantastic Four villain to be in a Fantastic Four movie. Mm -hmm. What a concept. Well, no, and I think... DC Comics? <laughs> no. I think what, what does work with Doom is, again, the big defining characteristics for me of Doctor Doom is a supreme arrogance, an inability to ask for help, and an absolute hatred for Reed Richards and just wanting to take what is his, right? And you see that with his relationship with wanting Sue Storm simply because that was what would Reed would want. Yeah. That's very consistent with Doctor Doom. Um, and I think, while not the perfect adaptation of the character, for a villain in a comic book film compared to what we get out of a lot of movies, I think he's pretty serviceable for it. Yeah. The main part, though, that does work about this film, though, is as far as the personalities of the Fantastic Four, I think they nailed that. They really did. I think the other part I've seen get panned a little bit is a lot of people don't like that Ben Grimm wasn't CGI, that it was kind of, you can tell, makeup thrown on oh, the actor. I was going to say, about that suit, that Ben Grimm suit, I thought it was really cool how it was so close to the Kirby. Yeah. I mean, when he opens up his hand, like, to take the ring, all I saw was Jack Kirby art. Yep. You know, and, and then when they would pan back, um, I just saw Jack Kirby, and that, that made me smile. And I, I think I love the fact that because it was a, CGI it was with 
It was his artwork. No, there's in some real clear life panels that you can tell they were recreated. On in, in, yeah, I mean, I love that. Well, I like that they didn't do the CGI route and that you lose the performance if you do that. I think Michael Chiklis did a very good job of bringing Ben Grimm to life where you can kind of see the emotion through what he has in a way that I don't think CGI would have given justice to. And mm -hmm. one of the things is the Thing is such a central character in Marvel Comics, period. Not only part of the Fantastic Four, but just his popularity in Marvel, period. And I thought he just did a really good job of adapting that role. And what I liked about the movie, it did not shy from that Ben kind of got the curse. Everybody else gets these kind of cool powers and they get to live a normal life. Ben is the one who kind of loses everything as a result of this. Fiance leaves him, he's considered a freak, and he has all that. And I like that there's a journey for him in that, and that kind of the envy and hatred of what happened to him turns into, at the end of the movie, he makes a decision that, no, I will be Ben Grimm. He physically turns himself I into it. I will be it. the thing, yeah. And that's so much his journey in the comics for years. Um, and I love that it also included Alicia Masters, his girlfriend and now wife in the comics. is a huge part of that. It's kind of Ben turns around on being the thing as soon as she enters, which in the comics is very accurate. And to do that in one is. movie, like, you know, that would never happen today. I also but think, they did it well. I think this is kind of a precursor to the MCU, too. And the, the humor in this movie, I, for me, really works You're right. between the characters. They have scenes where Johnny's kind of pranking the thing when they're stuck in kind of quarantine. Classic. They work really well. There's a part before he turns into the thing where, you know, Johnny plays a prank on him and is like handing him a mirror and he's like, You're not ready for what's there. Oh, that was and so funny. And he holds funny, it up right? and he's still himself. And he's it's just one joke, but it works and it so perfectly captured that little brother, older brother kind of relationship that the, the thing and the human torch have. And um, I just really loved it throughout the film that it did that. These these four actors and these four characters, they really felt like a family dynamic at the end, which is the key thing of any Fantastic Four thing. And when this movie came out, it was really hyped up. I mm -hmm. mean, it was a big deal. And, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, we, we were, we had just seen, um, Spider-Man had already hit, so we'd had, had the Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2, and the Hulk came out in 2003. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, it was just starting to gain momentum, and, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I just, I had fun watching it. Um, it was a little bit of nostalgia. Like, for those yep. of you that have been watching comic book movies for 20 years, you'll remember when that came out and going to the theater and having a good time watching it. Because it, it was a good movie, and and I think that it just gets a bad rap now because everyone, you know, ha compares it's it. It's one to... of those things that kind of becomes a movie that I think, and I think the 2005 Fantastic Four. It's interesting for me is I remember it kind of being disliked, but it still got a sequel. And then over the years, as the MCU blew up, the reputation of this movie just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and people kind of burying it. It's one of those things where it's kind of like the internet almost took over, where it's like it used to be people to have hugely strong opinions about this movie, and then it turned into like, no, that's like the absolute worst comic book movie of all time, which it's just simply not. Yeah. Um, and I, I really worst think... Worst comic book movie It's not the MCU. Ever. Yeah, it's Again, not the MCU. I love the MCU. Me and Mike just did a bunch of videos going through the MCU. We're huge fans of what the MCU, well, it was at least what they used to be. They're kind of struggling now. It's amazing. But... I love this film, and I think it's kind of a precursor to it in the way the humor was integrated into it, uh, the way the characters kind of all come across. And again, one of the biggest things of this film is you can tell there was a love for the comic books behind this movie. Yeah. The costumes and they making sure really it had the true. four and the, you know, yeah. all those sorts of things. And again, there's some changes with Dr. Doom. Of course, that's going to happen. Uh, I think Dr. Doom himself, though, his origin's been retconned and all kinds of things in the, in the comics, if you read Fantastic Four. But for four, the for a Fantastic long time. Four themselves, they stayed true. And again, it's a theme that we keep coming back to. Is not being embarrassed of the comic book material. And I think this is one of those films that, you know, if you read the Jack Kirby, Stan Lee original Fantastic Four books and then watch this, that's tonally consistent. Yeah. And. One of the things is, is me and Mike have kind of gone through these movies that we like that typically get panned now. I think there's a huge, sharp divide kind of between people who love comic books and then who like movies and people who love movies and kind of tolerate comic books. And I think what, what I really I think like they're trying to turn the tables on that. Yep. And I, I, I really the internet. think one of the things is I think this is actually a path that Marvel should get back to in that what I, I will say Marvel to me I think you can directly correlate when they stopped using comic book material and started telling their own stories to when the MCU fell 
Yeah. If you look at a lot of through Endgame, they were directly adapting stories from the comic books and villains from the comic books. Yep. Look at the ones that have struggled. Ant-Man and the Wasp, there's no comic book where Ant-Man fights Kang in the quantum verse with MODOK. They made all <laughs> that up, and you can tell. Yeah. Thor, Love, and Thunder, there's really no plot that resembles the plot that they had of that, and you nope. can tell. They kind of made it up as they went. And while there is no perfect adaptation of, like, the Winter Soldier movie is different than the comics. The main building blocks and elements were there are taken from the story that Ed Brubaker wrote with the Winter Soldier. Yep. Same thing with Endgame, kind of grabbing from the original Infinity Gauntlet story. Which means you can't go wrong if you stick to the source material. Yeah. No, and it's, it's, it's crazy. Where, it's where things get dicey is when you try and veer off and somebody who's not a comic fan goes, hey, I got a great idea. Yep. No, no, and, you don't. And what's so funny is you literally <laughs> have like 60 years of market research behind most of these comic book characters to go like, what works and what doesn't. Right? Like the Fantastic Four is kind of a tried and true concept that since the 60s has kind yeah. of worked. And so it's, it's just so interesting to me how much we've kind of veered off path on that. And I, I admire this movie for it. It, it recreated the, both the good and the bad parts of some of the Fantastic Four thing in terms of, no, this is what their power set is. And I, I really hope Marvel kind of copies that with what they do, at least sticking to who these characters are. I'll admit, with how Marvel's been doing recently, I am more and more fearful the more and more the Fantastic Four movie comes up because I'm not more, I'm more looking at it as like, okay, what are they going to change? Who are they going to change? Yeah. How are they going to change? And I liked that old comic book movies kind of had the spirit of, like, this is what the character looks like. They're going to cast someone who looks a bit like the character or at least embodies the spirit of the character. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like Marvel. It'd be nice. I'm, I'm worried for what they do with the Fantastic Four. And I hope they kind of go back because, again, this is not a perfect movie. But I think there's a lot of great elements to this. Um, there's a great fight sequence captured. at the end. No, one of the great, he mentions the fight sequence at the end. I love the way they had the Fantastic Four to kind of combine their powers at the end to defeat Doom. It takes all of them using their own specific kind yeah. of power set to defeat Also him. true to the comics. True to the comics. And it's, it's just good to see character development movies. All of these characters kind of start out in a different place. And the movie is a lot more of a character journey for each of them. Reed is this kind of broken genius at the beginning of the film, and he eventually, through what happens in the movie, accepts being a leader, being more forthright, kind of getting that balance of, okay, my personal life and my science knowledge can mix, and he gets his life completed at that. But Johnny doesn't change, which is good, because he, yep. he's not supposed to change. But even him, he learns maturity and a bit of responsibility <laughs> at the end. A I little bit. That. A little bit. But again, Johnny's one of those characters that's a little stagnant. The thing definitely goes through a character journey of this is a curse there's and he doesn't a huge want it arc. to accepting it. There's a huge arc there. Sue Storm even has one. And I, I hear Jessica Alba gets panned all the time. I thought she did a good job of capturing the spirit of who Sue Storm is in a lot of the early yeah, Fantastic the Four early comic ones. books. Yep. And that's one of the things too is that I know... More of the matron. One of the things is they try to change all these characters. Look, there's a lot of people like that in real life. Yeah. Who are the matron kind of person who lives with a bunch of boys and they have to be the mother figure to them. That's a real life person. Just because it's not the like kick butt action female hero we put in every movie now, doesn't mean that that's a negative way. And that there are a lot of real people who act like that. And especially if you go back and see Sue Storm in the comics, I think it's the first 20 to 30 years of the comics. That's, that's who she That was is. her role. And the thing is, people kind of make it like a negative. I honestly walked away from the movie more impressed with Sue and that like, the level-headed person with all these insane changes happening. If not for her, it, it would keeps have, them together. Yeah, she was the glue. And like, Absolutely. She helps Reed realize his potential. She, she keep, checks Johnny. She's the one that when Ben reaches his breaking points is able to talk to him. She's the one who can emotionally connect with all these people and make them the heroes that they are because she gets them to see past themselves. Yeah. And I thought that was great. Um, I, I just I miss when they used to write com characters with just some complexity but behind it as opposed to just here's the strong lead character of the film whether it's a man or a woman they start to get more cardboard that. yeah the more you go down that path mm -hmm. um, like I said stick to the stores material um, you'll you'll uh, you'll be better for it every time yeah they stick to the strengths in this film all the characters are distinct it works so if this is a film that you kind of have just let the internet tell you is a really, really bad film, I would say just try to watch it in a vacuum. Yeah. Again, it's 2005. The CGI is the CGI. It's not perfect, but for its time, it's pretty good. And I think if you're a Fantastic Four fan, there's a lot of the essence of the characters in there.
So yeah. it's definitely worth a revisit. Something I think that if you just kind of watch it with an open mind and enjoy and kind of just again, like me and Mike always compare these movies to, if it's just a boring Sunday, you got nothing to do, pop this thing in. I don't think that you'll walk away with any sort of negative thing. I think you'll actually be a fan of it. Uh, but again, comment in the, what do you think about it below? Comment below. Let, uh, us, let know. us know. And if there's movies you'd like us to try to revisit, if it's something that we have seen ourselves and agree with you on, we'll be happy to cover it in the channel. But uh, thanks again, and you have a great week. We'll see you next time.